So, you know, roughly our game is about energy. Uh, as you run your business, if you've got energy, you can grow, you can manage risk, you can even deal to the Australians. If you haven't got energy, you're fucked. Excuse my love, but you are. This is the drama of an entrepreneur. If you haven't got energy, it's game over. So we specialize in the, in the business of managing energy. How do you stay calm and focused when it's chaotic? How do you look after your body when you've got not even enough time to do the basic customer service stuff? How do you tune into your emotions, the stuff that really does help you grow and connect, which we'll talk about tonight, and how do you work with the mind, and possibly the spirit? And I think that's a really important piece. I mean, business should be joyous, it should be fun. Why did you sign up for this game? To have a good time. How many business people really have a good time? You know, some are suffering out there. So that is, in a nutshell, our game. And I want to talk about uh, the concept of empathy very, very quickly. It's an interesting one because it is the, uh, it's the other hand of Adam Smith. You guys all understand courage, power, force, entrepreneurship. That is the strength we all recognize. But the flip side is compassion, is the ability to tune into others, to understand others, and to work skillfully with them. Okay, now, we all think that humans survived on the sort of survival of the fittest. That was a dreadful misinterpretation of Darwin. In fact, the humans that have survived are the humans that connected, the humans that collaborated, the humans that could understand each other around the cave and out in the felt, uh, because it is the capacity to connect, to empathize, that allows you to really build community and in today's world, business, and if we really want to take it further, nation. Uh, it is also how you can connect with the Australians. Uh, it was our first business venture to get into Australia. It is by far our most profitable business. It's small, but it's really effective and run by Australians, sadly. Um, <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> The other side of this empathy is it's something that is, uh, is really one of the greatest news stories of our time. Uh, violence levels in the world are dropping really fast. So despite what the media tells us, we are becoming better human beings. On the flip side, if we go around this room, a number of you will know or have children with Asperger's. Asperger's uh, is a deficit of empathy. The poor young people who suffer from Asperger's cannot connect. They cannot look at someone and not panic. So they cannot understand what the other person is thinking or feeling. And that is a huge handicap to have, as, as many of you will know. Now, Asperger's has increased 200-fold in the last 45 year, years, 200-fold. Uh, it's a huge, huge issue. Uh, and, you know, our generation didn't learn anything about empathy. We have no idea what even emotional intelligence is. Uh, so I want to give you just a very, very short uh, sample of that. Um, if you're going to get into this game, there are four things as a leader I think you can really concentrate on and get better at. Um, and before you even go to those four things, you better work out if you've even got a chance. Can you put your fingers out in front of you like this? So straight elbow fingers back. Can you see how my ring finger is longer than my index finger? Straight elbows, pulled back hand. I want you to look at whether your ring finger is longer than your index finger. Okay, how many of you have a ring finger longer than your index finger? Yeah, so you guys don't really bother. You know, you may as well just have another drink. It's over your head. So it's an interesting one because uh, depending on what was going on in your womb, did your mum have a lot of testosterone, were you in there with a baby brother, you have testosterone that activates the Cox gene. If you activate the Cox gene, your ring finger becomes longer. It also gives you fast twitch muscle fiber, so you win races. And people make money on betting on races based on ring finger length. It also gives you, unfortunately, the male brain. And the male brain is not good at connecting. It's not good at empathizing. Those of you with shorter ring fingers have much better prospects of winning in this battle. So the four simple things that we finish. One is, if you want to connect with others, you've got 
Now they worry. It's too late for me. So, so some will be more empathetic if they won't win the race. Others will win the race but won't be empathetic. That's pretty much it. Yep. So winners are ourselves. <coughs> That's it. But let me go further. So the question is, can you learn it? Clearly we can learn it. Humans around the globe are learning empathy at a rate of knots. Business people are learning it. Leaders are learning it. Our children need to learn it. Four things you can do. The first is to tune into this. You've got to be present. You've got to pay attention. This is very difficult. You know, when judges listen to parole cases, they give 70% of the people at 8.50 parole Shortly after lunch, about 10%. They just fail to be present. Okay, so if you want to lead, you've really got to find the emotional energy to stay connected with people. Hour-long meetings are not always the best strategy. Maybe it's 20 minutes, very focused. And you may be listening, but you have to demonstrate to the other person that you're listening. And having your cell phone next to you bleeping is not going to demonstrate that. Second, you've got to learn these facial expressions. So you can sit in a room and you can pick the faces as they flash in 0.15 of a second. There are 412 different emotions. They flash in front of you 250,000 times a day. That is way more than you can learn from actions and from, from words. So if you can read these emotions, you're onto it. You know what someone is feeling, you know what they're thinking, you can predict how they're gonna act. Thirdly, you wanna be able to at least let them know. So if you see something, put it back in their court. Let them know, that's what I think I heard you say, am I correct? And fourthly, and this is interesting in our business, is should we really be interested in the whole person? Most of this work says, yes, we should. So taking a little time to get to know the people in your business well. What are their kids doing, you know? What do they hang out with doing in the weekends? And taking that little time, those moments of truth uh, with other human beings. And it's really only a starting point, but uh, lots of evidence suggests that empathy is kind of the, the keyhole to outstanding leadership. Hi, so just to give you a bit of a background about me and my business uh, that I started with my husband. Um, my husband has um, a business management degree and I trained as an optometrist. So I didn't have a lot of business background to actually build the business. We started six years ago with 12 staff. We have 200 today. Um, when, we went, when I went to the OMP group, I had, we had 120 staff and we were opening our third store. I got to the stage where James had actually done a couple of one-day courses with Ice House and he was quite keen to do the whole course. And we were just about to open this next door and one morning I just crawled under the table and I just said, I was spiralling down and I was not in control anymore. And um, James said, you need to ring Mike Stokes today. You're not coming to work, do you ring Mike? And so that day I enrolled for Ice House. At the same time, my general manager did a four page email to me saying where we were all not coping. And um, we started to put things, I didn't get onto Ice House for about two months, I think it was before that it started, and we started to put systems into place. But um, for me, Ice House has been life changing. And even today I had someone from Ice House that was in my group who's actually doing some work for Ice House at the moment and he wanted the, the good, the bad and the ugly of Ice House. Warts and all, I think he came to me about, and I said, well, there weren't really many warts for me in Ice House. Which, um, every single lecturer that came on board offered one thing, and it only has to be one thing that you can take back to your business that can help your business grow, and everything has a, something significant that's there. The facilitators um, are controlling, like you say, in these sort of businesses. You've got a lot of entrepreneurs, um, a lot of, um, I'm very much a go-getter type person and I had never really sat down and listened to the staff. I wanted to do things all the time, and I, within a day they were saying, there you are Janine, you're walking out here, and all my staff were behind me as I was putting, trying to put things into place, but not really setting back and putting really good systems into place. Um, so I think, I mean, there's a number of things I got out of Ice House, but to back up Sven as an owner-manager, you know, we are doers, and we tend to not be aware of a lot of other things that are going on. Um, detecting verbal cues was really, really important for me. Um, 
I, to gain respect from a lot of my staff. I was so busy saying we need to do this, we need to do that, we need to do this, I've got this coming in and I'll just pass things on and I was on to the next thing um, to actually acknowledge their perspective. And it was really interesting as I stepped back and um, started to empower my staff, pass things on to them, listen to what they had to say. I had this whole management team that was waiting to take positions within our company and um, not one of them have left us and moved on to another company and they've all grown, taking on the challenges and really, really enjoying the growth that we've got as a company. Um, we have had 65% growth a year since we started. Um, since I've done Ice House, our um, turnover only finished this time last year, I think our graduation was, and we've doubled our turnover since then. So it's a, it's a really lovely, exciting story. We've actually, we've opened up Hamilton and it hasn't been a success. So that's how you deal with something that hasn't worked so well as well. Um, and through Ice House and the things that I've learned and being able to implement from that, um, we've been able to make changes to that store to help it work better and to work through scenarios to change <coughs> what's happening there. So it's, um, for me, I've, I've really picked up the empathy side with my staff. I've become a lot more reflective. I've listened to what they've got to say, what they've got to offer, what the people from Ice House have offered. Um, and we've had huge progress within our company. And it, for me to stand up here tonight is a no-brainer because I've got so much out of it. Um, to give back, I will give back my time, any time, to Ice House. It's just a phenomenal experience. So I've probably had a more emotional ride because I was literally spiralling down in that emotional thing. So much was happening in, in our business and now we're really strong in the business going forward and um, yeah, so many systems in place and the company is, you know, it's a really exciting business to be in and I really enjoy going to work again, <laughs> which is something I wasn't doing at that stage. So you know, feel free just to you know, ask me questions, but um, yeah, it's been an incredible journey and like I said, the whole course, when I came along to one of these evenings, I think we came along to BNZ and um, I actually thought it was a bit of a sect or something, I thought it was something a bit weird. Everyone talks about I'm in the Ice House group and I thought it was some religious sort of group. It was <laughs> and, um, but the friendships I've made, um, the team of the people that we've got together that was in our group. I mean, like last weekend I went to Kawa with two of them and their partners. Um, it's an incredible journey. Everyone's in the same, you think you're spiralling down, but you know, some people were going through transitions with their companies um, that had you know, parents and family involved and how to deal with that. Everyone had different issues, but they were similar issues. And uh, yeah, no, it's an incredible journey and I would totally recommend it. I think, and, and the only thing I said today, my warts and all, um, people think it's expensive, but you do pay it back very, very quickly. And I'm sure there's a lot of small to medium enterprises. There is the, you know, the payment that you can get on the, what is it, the small business enterprises. We didn't cover for that because we had over 50 staff, but you can get money from that, you can get money from the BNZ. Um, and I probably wish that it was available to more people to take up because I think so many New Zealand businesses could really thrive from it. So for me, it's just nothing to give back to it. So it's been so amazing. Mm -hmm.